Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Wingate Solutions. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to again say thank you to everybody that's been supporting the channel. It's been very humbling and it's been an awesome experience so far. Uh, anyway, today's video is going to be about things to consider when either buying or building a rifle. All right, let's get into it. All right, things to consider when buying a rifle, right? So this is going to be an off-the-cuff and discussion based, well, discussion with myself, but based on some of the feedback and based on things I see in the community, things that I wanted to address and bring up. I'm just going to kind of flow with it in no specific order. I don't have any notes. It's just going to be me talking. So give me some feedback when we're done, how what you agree with, what you think. But uh, in general, our community needs to be more supportive of each other. There's a lot of companies and a lot of dudes out there that are really doing good work for the 2A community pushing good knowledge and they're getting good products out there for us. There's definitely some negative people out there that constantly have to put others down and we got to get away from that. Um, and one of those topics I see a lot is rifle choice or different build parts, right? So I want to address some of those from my experience. Maybe yours is different. Maybe we can have common ground on some of this stuff. And uh, we should have be able to have, you know, positive discussion on these topics. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And uh, one of the biggest things I see that's a problem, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way before I even start talking about rifle builds, is this idea of certain things being for the poors and then certain things being for guys that have money, right? Like there's a lot of poor bashing is what I see. And I think it's kind of ridiculous. It's, we got to get away from it, right? There's certain products, certain things out there that we all could probably agree with that are not to be considered serious use items. Uh, a lot of gun show optics and really low bottom tier parts. Yeah, we should not promote things that are going to be straight up garbage for guys, especially guys that are getting into this type of mindset of training and using their gear. <laughs> But something I see a lot is the, uh, and again, I don't want to hurt any feelings. If you get triggered by this, I apologize. We should be adults. We should be able to talk about this stuff. I'm not always going to say nice things. I'm going to try to say them as respectfully as possible. But I see a lot of guys that love to spend a ton of money on something just to take pictures of it, right? Or, you know, they'll spend $10,000 on a rifle and the thing's probably got barely any rounds out of it, but to them, they have that peace of mind and a flex on others that their rifle will be able to last eternity and get them through every battle they foresee themselves getting into, right? And it's silly. This sort of thing, it sounds corny, but at the end of the day, it comes down to it being the Indian, not the arrow. That's the reality of it, right? If you don't train and you don't use your stuff it does not matter if you have a $10,000 setup or a $1,000 setup. At the same time, if you train and you're proficient, you can get a lot out of a more budget setup, especially when you're learning. And it might not be feasible for you to drop that ten grand on a setup right away, right? So I want to find some common ground in that, and we should be able to get there with appropriate discussion on this topic, right? Again, as a community building type of subject. Anyway, I'm kind of throwing a bunch of words out there. However, I don't think it's intelligent to be this type of guy that spends $10,000 on $10,000 rifles either. That's just as bad as having the Gucci ones that you don't use, having a million cheaper ones that you don't use is just as bad. It just give that type of mindset is uh, in that same category for me, right? So the important thing is using your gear and actually training. That's what it comes down to. So there's different tiers of gear and there's certain ones I recommend. And that's what I'm going to get into a little bit here without going like full into the weeds on specific brands. I'm going to use a few as examples. So don't think I'm shilling for any of them. 
I'm not affiliated with any of these brands with the exception of my sling company, right? That's just my wife and I making slings and soft good products. So other than that, and my brother's company, Weekend Warrior Customs, I'm not affiliated at this point with any rifle manufacturers, suppressors, optic, anything. I just have ones I like. So let that be what it is, right? But in general, I'll bring up Palmetto State Armory as one of my first topics because that's probably the most common suggest suggested manufacturer for guys getting into this sort of hobby, right? They're kind of regarded as the like budget-minded Minuteman rifle company for good reason, right? Their company, and I don't know those guys personally at all, but they're pretty adamant, at least like online, about getting rifles in the hands of of as many Americans as they can to make them common use items and to support the second amendment and what our forefathers wrote it for. Right? So it's important to be able to make these rifles accessible to everyone. And I think they truly have really made the price of a lot of these rifles come down to the point where it's reachable by a lot of people now, like AR 15s are, you know, a dime a dozen at this point. And again, I'm not saying that those are necessarily the best option for everyone, but to get into the game, we shouldn't shame people if all they can afford is a 400 and change dollar Palmetto State Armory build. They're great. I'd rather see someone get that and go to training, get a lot of time in behind that gun, learn manipulations that don't matter how expensive your gun is, right? Understanding how to run that platform is the important thing. And then as time allows, if they foresee themselves needing more quality components in specific areas like barrels, bull carry groups, triggers, optics, all that, they can get to that point after they gain some experience running the Air 15 platform. Cool? That's kind of my mindset on it. So I recommend those more budget rifles for somebody that wants to just get into this way of thinking because it's a lot easier of a pill to swallow. And trying to explain to them why they need to buy a full complete BCM or a Geisley or, you know, whatever manufacturer is like the hot topic nowadays, right? It's a lot easier for me to try to set somebody up with that thousand dollar budget to get into this. And then over time, convince them why there's certain components they might want to spend a little more money on as time allows. And as they, you know, buy into the program a little more, if that makes sense. I'm getting a little winded here, a little, a little wordy. Right, I'll, I'll try to try to slow that down a little bit, but it's a big topic that's been on my mind, so I've wanted to kind of throw it out there. And like I said, it's off the cuff. You're kind of getting what you're getting what you get here with me, but I appreciate you guys watching. So, Palmetto State Armory, that's just the one brand I'm going to bring up to kind of fill that topic of that budget rifle. Right, I recommend it if you're new to this stuff and you want to train and you don't have the money, go that route. And again, there's other companies, so don't, I'm not saying just go Palmetto. Do your research, figure out which ones are in that budget that you have, and go from there. But don't feel shamed that you can't go and spend thousands of dollars on those components right away. No big deal, right? This might end up being a little bit more lengthy of a video. I guess we'll see. You'll see before I will, because you're going to see it after editing. But I'm going to go over just a few components I have in a few of my builds without getting too specific right? Of things I recommend. In short, you need a rifle you can rely on. And that's again, going to be varying depending on what you expect to get out of the rifle. Buying a budget rifle, don't expect it to last forever, but it might be the perfect tool for you to get into right now. But either way, you need a rifle that's going to work and get you out there training and that you can trust. And that Trust might come with time, right? Putting rounds down range with that setup. But a rifle, a quality optic, a sling, and a white light are the basics, right? Those are the things you need. A lot of other things are nice to have, but what you need in most professionals' opinion is a quality rifle, that white light, a sling, and then the optic can be a varied topic because a quality set of iron sights with the right guy behind them can be a pretty dang effective setup. So optic or iron, some kind of aiming solution for the gun, right, is recommended. Now, in my opinion, if you're going to go with a cheaper 
red dot and get iron sights, backup iron sights to go with it. Optics in general have come a huge way. Even in the last 10 years, it's been insane where they've come. It used to be that you literally had to go EOTech or Aimpoint to not have something garbage on your gun. And then slowly, the Vortexes, Hollow Suns, Primary Arms, SIGs, a lot of these other companies started actually putting out budget-minded quality optics. And I get, well, quality, right? Like everyone's like opinion, that's going to vary. Um, so that's where, again, I want to not get to the point where we're just shaming guys that can't afford 700 bucks on something. If they can get something for a hundred dollars and get that train in value. And it's going to probably be 90% as effective for them. Great. I've broken aim points in the past, so I'm not going to try to act like those expensive optics never fail. They do. They absolutely do. So getting something with a quality warranty that can get you out shooting right now, good to go. But anyway, quality optic, which I'm not going to get specifics of optics right now. I plan on doing a lot more optics related content, quality sling, quality white light, and you're good, right? Things like free floated handguards. That's a, that's a want, not a need. So there's a lot of wants on these rifles. I ran a fixed A2 sight post uh, carbine for years for work. Our whole department ran those for years. And they were effective for what we needed them for. Red dot, backup sights, sling, white light. You're good, right? So that's all you need. The wants, though, free float handguards are nice. I like a rifle that has a longer handguard for varying type of shooters to be able to grip the rifle, depending on body size, to not have something interfere with the barrel when you're doing barricade work as much. And uh, in general, just to have a more accurate setup, depending, right? So it's in theory, it's going to be a more accurate setup if you have a quality handguard that's free floated. That's kind of generally accepted nowadays. And uh, each rifle, each barrel is going to still vary on that. But uh, in theory, it makes sense. Well, talking about handguards. Again, I'm not going to get too specific on the brands, but I like a free float handguard that's going to have anti rotation tabs of some sort. Like this BCM, it has an actual steel anti-rotation tab that's separate from the handguard but it works really well at keeping that handguard from shifting side to side and again some are better than others um, but these are pretty pretty common the bcm mlock key mod whatever your flavor is it doesn't really matter um, mlock is the most accepted nowadays you know pick rails are starting to come back they're great they're just gonna be chunky right i ran a 10-3 colt with a pick rail for work for years Nothing was a beast. It ran great, but also was chunky for a little 10-3 rifle, right? Um, so they're great, but M-Lock in general is going to be the standard that most guys are going to like. So I'm going to recommend a free-floated M-Lock handguard, anti-rotation tabs, and hopefully a decent lockup system and a decent barrel nut setup. And the cheap ones are going to be effective for most of those guys. Now, if you plan on running lasers and tons of things out front that you need to depend on not shifting, Going with one that has a really rigid handguard to barrel nut is going to be preferred. Like those are going to be like the Geisleys, things like that, right? The BCMs, like these are these are fine, relatively speaking. Um, but those budget handguards for guys that are just going to put an optic on, maybe some backup sights and a flashlight, maybe a grip. Those are going to work perfectly fine for most guys. Now, if you're chucking it off a mountain and you're doing crazy durability testing, yeah, then you might come across some things but in general they've come a long way now even the simple free floated handguards so bcm i like the bcm handguards i've uh talked about it in a couple of my videos i like the cmt rails cross machine and tool i really like their their uh lockup design all right another bar another handguard that i really like and again i, I didn't want to get too much into the specifics but i have a couple rifles out here so i figured i'd bring them up the alg handguards a lot more annoying to install if you haven't done one. Now, if you've done a few, it's not that bad. They, uh, you have to use a special wrench and time it with shims. So it's a little more annoying. But once this thing is locked on and you have it set up, it's an awesome design. Very stout, very rigid handguard. So ALG is, I believe it's Bill Geisley's wife's company. Uh, so made in PA quality. I don't. They stopped making these for a while. They may have started again. So don't quote me on that. But either way, if you can 
if you're looking for like a, a step up from maybe like a, a rail that was on your palmetto build or something else or you're building from the ground up and you don't want to spend a ton of money these alg rails are really nice they're a little bit funky in the layout of the m lock in that they don't have your a standard 45 um or sorry the uh three and nine o'clock so mounting a light you may have to just use um like straight light mounts you're not gonna be able to use the four like the canted light mounts that i prefer in a lot of mine but that's not the end of the world all right without getting too much into brands uppers and lowers right if they're made out of quality parts from a quality manufacturer to spec it doesn't matter what branding's on your lower that's personal preference if you want to rep a specific brand over another there's nothing wrong with that it's we're humans we like we like to do that sort of thing but in general you don't need to spend a million bucks on a mil spec lower from this company over this other company they're as long as they're in spec they're going to work but it's kind of generally recommended if you're going to put together a rifle right upper and a lower or fully build that's a whole different topic really and i kind of hit on it a little bit is get a quality but more budget-minded lower right make sure it has solid parts kits like i like the arrow arrow lowers and i've had really good luck with their lower parts kits and uh then upper is really where i would spend that extra money that's where i might look into getting a complete bcm right or again there's a bunch of other flavor companies i'm just using a couple of these as examples but it's generally regarded at like an arrow lower bcm upper is going to be a pretty squared away setup right and bcm offers a lot of different styles depending on what type of build you're making so i do recommend that for that next level up build um in my opinion they're good to go like i said no no particular order off the cuff we're just talking guns here right so barrels that's a hot topic in theory well not even in theory in, in use your best barrels are going to be and i'm not a metal metallurgist or anything like that but in general your chrome lined cold hammer forged barrels like some of the bcm barrels there's a lot of other ones those are going to be the best for long-term reliability under more extensive firing conditions, right? Then like kind of the next level down, the next tier down that guys talk about would be your nitrided barrels. Now they're going to be a different flavor of steel. Some There's some crossover between the different steels used, but in general, just the finishing of the nitride is going to be a pretty popular barrel setup. Um, because it does offer some corrosion resistance and things like that and usually are pretty accurate barrels um, so again like as as strong and as good and durable as the chrome lined cold hammer forged are they're not necessarily known to be the most accurate now again you might get ones that are your most accurate barrels but in general the industry kind of assumes they're a little bit little bit less on the accuracy side of things more for longevity and lifespan nitrides kind of somewhere right in the middle i like nitrided barrels i'm not shooting these with full auto and i do shoot them pretty pretty hot i get them going um i've had good luck so far you know they're uh they're good whether it's ballistic advantage or faxon is another popular one that guys use there's a lot of barrel manufacturers out there so pick your flavor do a little research kind of pick what you want yeah stay, stainless steel barrels right so this would be a extremely budget barrel this was one of the original palmetto state armory freedom series stainless barrels mid-length uh it had a fixed day two that i cut because i want i wanted to run this alg on it and it's free floated uh and it's a uh, free floated now and it has the pinned gas block that's cut down so it's pretty reliable as far as the gas block goes but it's a really cheap stainless barrel I butt, you know, button rifle, just government profile. I hate government profile, but it is what it is. This barrel just has worked well for me. It's a good, hey, you need a, a loaner gun? You're going to take a class with me or we're going to go shooting and you want to intro to AR-15? It's a perfect gun for that. But it's all PSA with the exception of upgrading to the ALG handguard for the most part. And it's just a simple budget rifle. Now, is this going to be my main choice for anything serious use at this point? No, because um, I have other ones I trust more. But 
would this most likely be able to solve any of the problems that most guys might come across where they're going to use a rifle? Absolutely. And I've vetted this one. Short of it having a catastrophic malfunction now, it's been great for a couple thousand rounds I've used it. And uh, that's what I was kind of getting at with this sort of thing can get you training and get you learning to run a rifle. And one of the biggest things I see is guys just not having the full understanding of how to manipulate these rifles. It's really the thing that you can't train other than putting time on the gun. Um, and a lot of it you can do at home. You can learn to run and manipulate a rifle dry on your own for free. And then vet that information or that training at a quality course to then get feedback of what you're doing is if it's right or wrong, right? You can get a ton of work done dry with these things, but it's a lot more than just pressing triggers manipulating these, understanding how to clear malfunctions, understanding how to break the rifle off your shoulder and move around barricades, and just in general run a rifle is one of the things I see lacking, lacking the most in the industry, whether it's professionals or recreational guys. Anyway, got a little off topic there. Hopefully you don't mind. <laughs> I figured if you're still here, you probably don't mind. But, uh, but yeah, perfectly functional rifle, right? Just a palmetto build. Another thing that those stainless barrels are great for is precision barrels. So again, those cold hammer forged chrome line may not be as accurate in theory. The whole other end of the spectrum would be the really nice stainless barrels, usually like SPR profile, heavier barrels. Those are going to be the ones that the match shooters that are looking for just straight up accuracy are going to go with. But they might not have the lifespan as those chrome as uh, the chrome line ones, especially if you're firing at a higher rate of fire across the duration of that barrel. It's going to burn it out a little faster, right? And every barrel is a little different. There's even different variations of stainless barrels out there. Some having a little bit better lifespan than others. Um, so, like something like this stainless government profile <clears throat> palmetto barrel, probably not going to last or be as accurate or be as just effective as like. One of the BCM, like 410 stainless barrels. Those barrels shoot really well. Or like a white oak armory uh, barrel, Criterion, a bunch of other barrels out there that make really nice precision barrels. So that's kind of going to be up to you of what your build is geared towards. More precision or more durability. And then the nitride is somewhere in the middle. Now, varying opinions on that for sure. And again, it's going to depend on the manufacturer. Um, but... Uh, I like the nitri nitrite barrels. I've had good luck with them so far. Subject to change like anything. All right, triggers. So upgrading the trigger. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I think there's a lot to be learned from just running a standard mil spec trigger. Um, and they're perfectly ef effective. Most guys running around there doing this stuff professionally are just running around with mil spec triggers. And you can be great with one. If you're building a rifle to be more of a precision build, the trigger is definitely something probably to upgrade to. Something uh, either single stage or two stage. That's all personal preference. I like two stage. You might like single stage. Again, we're all different. Um, typically, two stage triggers are going to be liked more by the precision community. But uh, And guys that like to run their triggers fast are going to like the single stage. But you can run a two stage trigger pretty dang quick too. I have the LaRue MBT 2S's in most of my guns. And they're awesome. So triggers are definitely a nice upgrade, but again, it comes down to, do I want to just throw a bunch of money at my cheaper build, or do I want to then get a lot of training in that gun and then plan to build a more quality rifle as my second rifle? That's kind of where I would recommend you go from there. Optics, we'll get more in optics as we go. Just do your research on what you want. Do you want a red dot, prism type optic, LPVO, more of a mid-range variable powered optic? They're all going to be for different roles, and that's going to be something you're just going to have to figure out as you go or kind of dive into what your preferred optic setup is going to be. You're going to have 10 different op opinions from 10 different guys. It's just the way it is. You don't have to go with a budget rifle. That's That conversation was more for the guy that's either just getting into this and doesn't quite know how much he wants to invest in it, wants to, get, uh, wants to invest in training, maybe wants a spare backup rifle or two. There's nothing wrong with that or uh, is on that budget where they're just not able to jump right to a couple thousand dollar bill, right? 
But if you are, that's perfectly fine. Go with a quality rifle setup from the start. There's a ton of them out there nowadays. It's kind of hard to mess up a rifle at this point unless you're making them, you know, with blindfold on and you have no care for quality control. Like they're just, they're such simple rifles nowadays that anybody could build one if you knew what you're doing. Uh, it all comes down to QC of the actual components. And that's what you're paying for with the more reputable brand. Anyway, long-winded. Probably going to wrap this up. If you have any questions, concerns, again, discussion. This is a topic that I think we all have varying experience on, like even me. I don't have the end-all, be-all experience on this sort of subject. Some guys will get down in the comments with some really awesome knowledge, and I appreciate that. So keep that flowing. And if it helped you at all, let me know. I missed anything, let me know. It was just an overview of a few parts and talking more about philosophy of budgeting and tiers of rifles more than anything. And hopefully I got somewhere with this. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, that's going to conclude the video. I really appreciate you watching all the way through. I hope you got something out of it. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up, that like button, and uh, maybe give me a comment down below. I really enjoy reading them. If uh, you want to support us in any other way, you can check out our website, WingateSolutionsLLC.com. Got our slings, our sling straps, and uh, some other goodies coming up on there soon. So stay tuned for that. If you want to see some more like up-to-date info as far as colorways or things we're coming out with, check out our Instagram, at Wingate Solutions. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, get out and train. Thanks, guys.